teams, um, and you can sign one and leave it on the table on your way out uh, so that you can attend future events. And thank you so much for being here tonight. First of all, I would like to thank Barbara Emerson, Vice President for Program Development and the New School University Diversity Initiative for making this possible. I'd also like to thank Jocelyn McCalla of the National Coalition for Haitian Rights, who readily pitched in, he readily pitched in when he found out I was do, going to do the show. Um, I'd like to thank IET Pogre, uh, who also contributed through advertising. And I certainly would like to thank all of you whose interest was sparked by um, Haitian culture and a very fancy flyer that was designed by Bob Malik. Uh, <laughs> there is a Haitian saying that says, with many hands, the load is not heavy. And tonight, not only is the load light, but it's going to be enjoyable. We have a very special performance for you tonight. Um, what makes it so special is not just the content, but the people involved. We are very blessed to have Master Haitian Roots drummer, Prisnia Augustin, who this past Last year, he received numerous awards, um, including the National Heritage Award, um, the one where you go to the White House and Hillary gives you a big hug <laughs> for being a cultural custodian. Um, and indeed, you know, Fritz Nair, coming from modest beginnings, committed his life to the drum. Um, and we're very, we're very grateful for that. Instruments which may call together, give sign or notice uh, to one another of their wicked designs or purposes. <laughs> As historian Christopher Johnson notes in his dissertation, uh, this, A Social History of the Drum, um, which he is working on a book on this topic, the law singled out the drum and removed it from the context or situation in which this instrument may have been used to portray, to portray the drum as an instrument of revolt. The original context may have well have been festive or spiritual, um, and herein lies the apparent reasons for such generalizations on the part of observers, since the real intent was not understood, the worst was presumed. And can I add that that also um, is often the case with Vodou. People don't understand Vodou, so the worst is presumed. Uh, indeed, the use of the drum in revolt was feared throughout the early to mid-1700s. In the Caribbean, there were uh, and what there was of the United States, fear of revolt led to the prohibition of slaves assembling together, assembling together, excuse me, to beat their military drums or blow their horns or shells. There was one place in North America, however, where concessions were being made to the rights of slaves to congregate in public, and that was New Orleans, and that was Congo Square. So, where does jazz and voodoo meet? And what went on in Congo Square? Well,
How you like it?
tonight. We're going to end our set with Congo for Congo Square. All right.
really gives me great pleasure to see so many of you here. Uh, this music is as much for all of you as it is for us up here. We enjoy ourselves, so we like to transmit that kind of happiness and joy to you. Mind you, this is a lot of work. <laughs> and um, as we continue to play, it only gets better. But you know, the history of this drum set here is, and that, it, it's, it's something which originated more or less in this country. Uh, as you had heard Sarah talking about the drum being taken away from us, well, that was true. Um, it's a whole history about it. You know, I don't want to go into too much because I'll, we'll be here till tomorrow in terms of the explanation and the history of it. But uh, very briefly, um, as the Africans were brought to the Caribbean, the hand drums were allowed to be played simply because the plantations were large, and then you, you didn't have as many overseers to uh, make sure that the slaves behaved, etc. So they allowed them to keep the hand drums. Uh, that's why you see, uh, like in Cuba, Haiti, uh, places like Santo Domingo, even Curaçao, Brazil, you have those hand drums. But here, and, this, and, and of course, too, many of those colonies were. Uh, governed by the French and Spanish, who were Catholics, see. But then again, too, the point is that they had larger plantations. Here in the United States, it was a little different with the British uh, and them having smaller plantations or smaller quarters, they could govern or tell the slaves what to do more than the people in the Caribbean could. So as a result, the hand drums were taken away. So in places like New Orleans, et cetera, where you had marching bands, the colonial bands, you see them like on quarters sometimes. They have them a few years ago where you see a, a drummer playing a snare drum for the troops to march, the colonial troops to march. So as a result, uh, we call this here the snare drum where you would get, I'll just play a little rhythm for you, which would resemble something like this. coming of the theater, etc., um, you would have um, space, like for instance tonight people would be dancing and they would be acting, etc. So you would have perhaps three or four drummers playing the different parts of the instruments, cymbals, maybe bass drum, uh, snare drum. But because of space, eventually they needed to condense the set. So one person began playing like the snare drum, and then the ride cymbal, and then the bass drum. So then you would have like one person doing the job of four people. And very simple, like the jazz ride beat goes like this. <laughs> as I have inherited and learned from the masters before, it began, it began to become syncopated so, and, and independently coordinated, as you say. you 
hear the horn players playing and the piano players, a lot of that stuff is based on what the drummers did. See that, that code, dang, ding, da dang, ding, da dang. And that code, incidentally, comes out of Africa, because you hear a lot of beats that go like this. See, so that's like the, what they call the, the, the gist of swing music, dang, da dang, dang, da dang, see? So, as we have it now, of course, there, you know, the, the, the drums have gone in so many different places. Uh, four, or either four people, four limbs, one, two, three, four, does the job of four people. So, in a nutshell, more or less, that is how we get what we call the trap drum set. Now, of course, this is condensed also, because if you go back and look at what people like uh, Sonny Grayhead with um, uh, Duke Ellington and uh, Chick Webb, they would have all kinds of um, uh, accoutrements. You see, they would have chimes, they would have wood blocks, uh, they would have um, uh, sometimes even uh, 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 timpani drums, and this was all around the drummer. So that's how the name a drummer and his trappings became a drummer and the trap set, because you had all of that stuff. But, you know, for me, just with this stuff here, it takes me like a, an hour just to set this up. <laughs> See? So if I had all of those other things, it would take me practically all day. And you wouldn't have to pay just a drummer, you'd have to pay a drummer and his helper. <laughs> so anyway, um, that is the short history of what this is, and um, obviously now this is played all over the world, and um, you know, rock and roll, blues, rhythm and blues, all that stuff is based on what comes out of this drum set having come through this. So that is more or less uh, what I have to say about this. start the music off, and this one, let me just mention these two gentlemen here. Mr. Pascal, whom I have known for many years. In his own right, he's, he's brilliant, he's brilliant. Um, I met him a number of years ago, I worked in his band called Ayazan, and uh, he taught me a lot of things about Haitian rhythms, etc. And we've been working together for how long now, Alex? Um, just a couple of years. Just a couple of years. Just a couple of years. Twenty-two. 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 Twenty-two.
he was with Center Stan. And I did a solo concert, just like a, you know, with a drum set like this. And he was with Center Stan, and we had some drummers from the Congo. And we also had some, with some drummers from what, Puerto Rico, Cuba, or something like that. I remember that. But it was a whole night of percussion. And we sang double mango. Yeah. See? And that's when I first saw a prisoner. But we never played together. <laughs>
Thank you.
like to introduce my big sister here. Stand up, come on, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up, stand up.
Thank you.